Hey everybody, this is Charmaine Marie. I am back with another video. So I want to make a video about Baliel. Baliel in the Hebraic Bible um, pretty much is the devil or Satan. Okay, so I want to break down um you know, Baliel is a Hebrew word used to categorize the wicked or worthless. Okay. The wicked or the worthless. So it talks a lot about Baliel and the sons of Baliel. Okay. The sons of Eli, they were sons of Baliel. Okay. Or sons of Satan. Let me just say that. So when you really do your research, and you read the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Book of Jubilees and then the Testament of the Twelve Patriots. And then also it talks about the um, worthless sons of Baliel in the ascension of Isaiah. So it also talks about, you know, these worthless men in other books of the Bible as well. So I study a lot from the lost books of the Bible, but I want to really tap into, you know, um, Baliel or the sons of Satan. Okay, I want to talk more about this because we need to get a better understanding of really what it is that we're dealing with down here on planet Earth. Okay, <laughs> so and we know that Baliel is going to be loosed against Israel as we get closer to the end. So you got to be suited and you got to get booted, right? And so we know that knowledge is power. So I want to talk about this. And so Baliel is used to categorize the wicked or worthless, okay? It means lacking worth, okay? That is what the word is often understood as, okay? It means... B-E-L-I means without, and that's believe, and then y'all or all is to be a value. So, Baliol or Baliol, however you want to pronounce it, I don't know if I'm saying it right or not, but it means to with to be without value, basically. So, basically, um, it can mean guiltless, you know what I'm saying? It means... May he have no rising or never to rise, okay? So, um, you know, we can see that this word, it occurs 27 times, okay? 27 times. And then also in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 6 and 12, it talks about how a naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth, okay? A deceitful mouth. A wicked mouth, okay? So it talks about a naughty person. Um, and then in the Hebraic text, the phrase is either sons of Baliol or simply sons of worthlessness, okay? So, um, you know, it talks about the sons of destruction. These men are sons of destruction. They're sons of lawlessness, okay? So we can see 27 occurrences in the Hebraic Bible, where it talks about the sons of Baliol, okay, or Baliol, it appears 15 times to indicate a worthless people, including in the book of Deuteronomy, where it talks about idolaters, okay? In Deuteronomy 13 and 13, it says that certain men, the children of Baliol, are gone out from among you. Okay, these men have gone out from among us. They have withdrawn the inhabitants or inhabitants of their city saying, let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. So now as they were making their hearts merry, okay, um, behold, the men of the city, certain sons, okay, certain sons of Baliol beset the house round about. They beat at the door and they spoke to the master of the house, the old man, saying, bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. This is in the uh, book of Judges, Judges 19, 22, and then chapter 20, verse 13, it talks about, you know, the men of Gibeah. 
And so then in 1 Samuel 2 and 12, it talks about the sons of Eli. Okay. Now the sons of Eli, they were sons of Bailey. All they knew not the Lord. And so um, also Nabal and Shimei. And so when you, you know, really kind of break this down, um, it talks about the wicked. Okay. The Bible uses wicked. And then at the book of Judges 19.22, you know, it's, it talks about these men that are given to wickedness, basically. So um, the sons of Eli, they were sons of Belial, and then um, the wicked men of the city. So we can see that this word also is applied to, you know, ideals, words, counsels, and to um, calamitous circumstances, most frequently to worthless men of the lowest sort. Such as men who would induce worship of other gods. Those of Benjamin who committed the sex crime at Gibeah. And the wicked sons of Eli insolent Nabal, the opposers of God's anointed David. So we can see that worthless men, they are opposers of God's anointed. Just as they was towards David, right? And so... um. Also, you can read about, you know, let me continue. Rehoboam's unsteady associates, okay? Jezebel's conspirators against Nabal's, and then men in general. These are men in general who stir up contention, okay? Indicating that the enemy power would no longer interfere with the carrying out of true worship by his people in their land, okay? So, um, the Most High God declared through his prophet, no more will any worthless person pass again through you. In his entirety, he will certainly be cut off. So it's talking about how the wicked, the wicked will be cut off, okay? They will not inherit the land. They won't even be able to pass through it, okay? No more worthless men, sons of Satan will be able to pass through because they're going to be cut off. All right. So um, I wanted to talk a little about this because I'm going to get deeper into, you know, really about the sons of Satan. And so, um, you know, it talks about this also in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay. So now in the war of the sons of light against the sons of darkness, if you read the lost books of the Bible, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, Baliar is the leader of the sons of darkness. Okay, this is the leader. And it says that in this book, you made Baliar for the pit, an uh, angel of enmity. And darkness is his domain. His counsel is to bring about wickedness and guilt. All the spirits of his lot are angels of destruction. They walk in the laws of darkness and towards it goes their only desire. Okay. So we can see right here that his darkness is domain and all of the sons that are worthless, they walk in darkness. Okay. In them, there is no light. Okay. So also in the rules of the community, yes, we're going to have Rules in the community, okay? And so that is another book that has been lost. When you study the rules of the community, okay, um, it says that God is depicted as saying, he, in this book, it says that I shall not comfort the oppressed until their path is perfect. I shall not retain L.E.R. within my heart. So basically, L.E.R. controls um, scores of demons, okay, which are specifically allotted to him by God for the purpose of performing evil, okay? So, uh, Beliar, despite his malevolent, okay, disposition, he is still considered an angel, okay? So, an angel he was, right? <laughs> and so, Beliar's present is found throughout the war scrolls. So if you have not studied the war scrolls and is established, um, 
It's established, I mean, as the force occupying the opposite end of the spectrum of God. So his presence is found throughout the war scrolls, okay? And um, when you read in a certain columns in the rules of the community and the war scrolls, so in column one, verse one, the first line of the document, okay, it is stated that the first attack of the sons of light shall be undertaken against the forces of the sons of darkness, okay? The army of Belial, or Belial. So, um, yeah, the war scroll, and then also the Thanksgiving hymns. If you have not read that, you may want to read up on that as well, because um, they basically, you know, dwell into the ideal that, that uh, you know, Beliar is a curse by God and his people, okay? And shows how the existence of him in this world can be attributed to the mysteries of God, since we cannot know why he permits the dealings of Beliar to persist, okay? But now in the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, Beliar is further contrasted with God. And these are the angels of light and then, you. I mean, the angel of light and then the angel of darkness. So also the manual of discipline, this is another lost book. It identifies the angel of light as God himself, which we know, okay? Because in him is no darkness. And then you have uh, Beliar is associated with the angel of darkness or identified as the angel of darkness. Okay, so you want to read uh, up on the manual of discipline, the rules of the community, and then the, the sons of light um, against the sons of darkness. You know, these are some books that we need to tap into to really get an understanding of what it is that we're going to be dealing with. Okay, and this stuff is very, we need to know, you need to understand. Okay. Um, we know that everything here in this world is a distraction, but we know that he's going to be let loose against Israel as we get closer and closer to the end. So, um, but yeah, that's okay because, you know, God put, put it in, you know, certain in, in the hearts of, um, you know, the kings and rulers of this world to, you know, play, play out his plan. Right. So, um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah, so basically, yeah, like I said, he's further contrasted with God. So also in the Dead Sea Scrolls is a recounting of a dream of Amram, right? So when you read about um, Amram, the father of Moses, who finds two watchers contesting over him, remember the angel of light, the angel of darkness? One is Beliar, who is described as the king of evil and the prince of darkness. And Beliar is also, he's mentioned in the fragments of uh, Zodokite, okay? So Zodokite, um, the fragments of a Zodokite work, basically. It's also known as the Damascus document. So, yeah, basically, this is another book that has been lost that you may want to read upon as well. So, so, yeah, basically, it states that, you know, during, um, the eschatology, eschatological, I think I'm saying that right. Eschatological age, yeah. So basically, during the end times, I'm just saying that, okay. Belial shall be let loose against Israel as God spoke through Isaiah the prophet, okay. So the fragments also speak of the three necks of Belial which are said to be fornication, okay? We know everybody fornicating, wealth, and we know everybody losing their mind trying to get money and everybody is slave to this dollar, right? And so then the pollution of the sanctuary. So in this work, LER is sometimes presented as an agent of divine punishment and sometimes as a, res as a rebel, as Mastema. Massima is an angel who persecutes evil in the book of Jubilees, and he carries out punishments for God, as well as tempting humans and testing their faith. So, 
In the Zodokite fragments in the Dead Sea Scrolls, he is the angel of disaster, the father of all evil, and the flatterer of God. Okay, so read about him as well. Read up on that. So it was Beliar who inspired the Egyptian sorcerers to oppose Moses and Aaron. So the fragments also say that anyone who is ruled by the spirits of Beliar in speaks of rebellion should be condemned as a necromancer and wizard. So these sons of Satan are necromancers and wizards, okay? And so, we, because rebellion is what? Witchcraft. So if you operate in a rebellion and you're not living by the word of God, you are a witch. You're operating as a witch and you acting doing witchcraft because you rebellious. And so rebellion is witchcraft. Okay, so I used to operate in, rebe in rebellion, so I know about it. I was a witch and didn't even know it. So, you know what I'm saying? Because rebellion is witchcraft. Okay, these are necromancers and wizards, the sons of Satan. That's what they are. So, that's why I wanted to make this video and I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to break this down because it's kind of deep, but. You know, hopefully you get the picture and you understand what it is, the words that are coming out of my mouth. So, in the book of Jubilees, also it says that uncircumcised Israelites are called the sons of Belial or, or Belial. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Also, Belial is also mentioned in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriots. So that is another lost book, Jubilees, The Ascension of Isaiah. So the author of the work, um, well, actually, in the Testament of the Twelve Patriots, basically, it talks about how Beliar or Belia, Bela, let me just say Satan because I can't get that word right. Okay, so Satan, <laughs> um, Beliar as God's opponent, okay? Uh, hold on, you guys. No, just all three. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So back to what I was saying. Okay. So, all right. So, um, we know that Satan is God's opponent, right? Not as a servant but does not mention how or why this came to be. Oh, okay. This is something else. Let me get back to, um, okay. So, yeah, what I was saying is that he also is mentioned, okay, um, Belial in the Testaments of the 12 Patriots, right? Okay. So we know that's another lost book. So Simeon 5 and 3 says that fornication separates man from God and brings him near to um, Belial. So Levi tells his children to choose between the law of God and the works of Satan. It also states that when the soul is constantly disturbed, the Lord departs from it and Satan rules over it. Naphtalia contrasts the law and will of God with the purposes of Satan. Also in um, chapter two, 20, verse 2, okay, Joseph prophesies that when Israel was to leave Egypt, they will be with God in light while Satan will remain in darkness with the Egyptians. Finally, the Testament describes that when the Messiah comes, okay, when he comes, the Messiah, the angels will punish the spirits of deceit and Belial or Bel Belial. Yeah. How, y'all know what I'm saying. And so the Messiah will bind Satan and give his children the power to trample the evil spirits, okay? So we're going to have power to trample those evil spirits, okay? Because he said that we would do greater works than he, right? So um, 
For many hath fornication destroyed, because though a man be old or noble, it maketh him a reproach and a laughing stock with Belar and the sons of men. Wow. In the decision of Isaiah, um, Belar is the angel of lawlessness and the ruler of this world and identify as um, Samael and Satan. And so even in the ascension of Isaiah, you see where Manasseh, he turned aside his heart to serve Belial for the angel of lawlessness, who is the ruler of this world. Okay, you better know who ruling this world. Why y'all sitting up there going to vote? What you going to vote for? Who you voting for, Satan? You voting for Satan. Every time you go down there and vote, you going to vote for Satan. Because it just told you who is the ruler of this world. It don't matter if it's Democratic or Republican. You voting for Satan. Okay? And let me see how you say this word. Because he got another name. You better know your enemy. Know your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, in the New Testament, Paul asks, what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an unbeliever? Yeah, we're not supposed to. Let me see. I'm pulling up something really quick. Because this is my favorite scripture, actually. <laughs> ah! Yup. Mm-hmm. Mean worthless. How can there be any unity between Christ and the devil? Okay. What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What does light have in common with darkness? Nothing. And the Bible says that we should not have fellowship with what? Devils. And so that's why I had to reject the spirit of a harlot. Okay? That's exactly why. I am not about to have fellowship with no devil. I sure ain't. Sons of plagues. That's all they are. Worthless. Worthless men. Lawless. Sons of pesticides, destruction. Ain't that sad? I mean, just always causing contention. Mm, mm, mm. I tell you what, I reject that spirit. And then it talks about this more in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is another lost book. I mean, you got so many lost books, it's ridiculous. Godly. I need to get up on them lost books and start studying them because they didn't took all this stuff from us, all of this information. And now people just lost in the sauce. And so then it says here, mm, 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 this is some stuff. Mm, I'm just sitting up here studying, but I just really wanted to make this video because I was just thinking about this harlot. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. This spirit, the spirit of a harlot and how I reject this spirit. Mm -hmm, I sure do. I already did. The master of lies. Yeah. So... If you have not read, like I said, um, if you have not read some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, okay, the Book of Jubilees, um, the Testament of the Twelve Patriots, the Ascension of Isaiah, the Resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's a lost book. If you have not read The War of the Sons of Light Against the Sons of Darkness, that's another book that you could actually um tap into oh yeah the thanksgiving hymns thanksgiving hymns um 
What's the other one I said? Okay, so hold on. Let me go back. Oh, the rules of the community. So yeah, we, we, we have rules, the rules of the community, the children of Israel and um, the rules of the community. Oh, the war scrolls. Mm -hmm, that's another lost book. And the manual of discipline. Yeah. So that is another lost book from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Democus document. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to make a video real quick about, you know, the sons of Satan, worthless men, yokeless. Um, they are never to rise. Okay. A naughty person. Worthless. That's all I can say. So, yeah, I will be back with another video and I'm going to be talking about more of um, the war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Yeah, but stay tuned for more because I'm going to continue to reject the spirit of a harlot.